Good morning, Santa Clarita. Welcome in. Good morning. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, homeschooling answers. I am Matt Watson, your host. Welcome in. This special edition of Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers is being brought to you by KHTS in collaboration with SCVI and iLead Charter Schools. We come to you live each day at 9 a.m. We provide support for you on your distance learning journey. And I know what you're thinking. For many of you out there, today is the day. Today is the last day of what's been a, a rough school year for so many of us. Uh, today is it for, for most area schools, I believe. Some of you wrapped up a few days ago, but uh, most of you are tying things off today. Congratulations, we made it. But we're heading into the summer and uh, you're still gonna wanna keep your skills sharp. You're gonna wanna make sure that your kids stay on top of things. And you know what? We've got a bunch of resources for you. Why don't you head on over to our website, homeschoolinganswers.com. Check that out. I, I know your, your kids are, are probably ready to start sliding into those wake up at noon days. But uh, you know, you're gonna wanna make sure that they stay on top of things and, and you're gonna find some really fun, engaging stuff on homeschoolinganswers.com. So head on over there, take a look around, see what you might wanna do for the summer. Uh, you've also got some great parenting tips you know with all of us uh, whether we're safer at home or we're just feeling a little cooped up or you know if things are going great you, you could always use a little bit of a tune-up as, as far as parenting goes we've got all kinds of love and logic tips there's some great videos with my colleague Linda Kristak and uh, some fun things for the kids and some resourceful things for parents over at homeschoolinganswers.com check it out you will want to make sure that you all continue to learn and grow. So happy Friday. Yay, it is Friday. You know, we talked about it yesterday. We got live sports back yesterday, Patty. We're super excited. I know, I'm so excited. Oh man, it was so <laughs> great. We got the PGA golf tournament back yesterday and I, I went right home from the studio and sat down and Watched about three holes of golf before I turned it off. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, we got live sports. Dedication back. right there, Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know how I am. But uh, it, it's good to be getting things back online. It was uh, it was actually neat to see the golfers mic'd up, and it, it, they're putting on an entertaining product. Now we're just looking forward to to getting the big four back: basketball, baseball, hockey. Y you know. It's uh, it's going to be a while for baseball still, but we're moving into it, so we are excited. And we've got a great show for you today. We're excited about that as well. Got the boss on the line. Uh, we'll be talking with Dawn Evenson. She is the co-founder uh, and CEO of SCVI and iLead California. So we'll be talking with her in just about 30 seconds. And as we do on Friday, we're going to be playing around with Big T to close the hour out. It's going to be a great Friday. So pour yourself a cup of coffee. I got mine right here. Relax and let's attack this day together. Now, like I said, my first guest is Dawn Evenson. Dawn currently serves as, well, she's forevermore the founder, but she's currently serving as the CEO for iLead California. Dawn Evenson has over 30 years experience in education and has substantial experience and expertise in, in the areas of kindergarten through eighth grade curriculum, instruction and assessment, as well as school leadership and governance. I, you know, I'm truly blessed to, to work for Dawn and I don't just say that because she's on the line right now. She's an amazing educator. She's been a teacher and a school administrator in both primary and secondary schools. Dawn has held several positions in the Association of California School Administrators, including serving as the region, region 15 president. She was awarded the Region 15 Middle School Principal of the Year Award by that same organization in 2006. Dawn is a founding administrative member, as I said, of SCVI, iLead's founding school. She's passionate about creating educational options for families that are innovative, engaging, and supportive. Her mission is to provide equal opportunity by creating relevant, high-quality educational experiences for all students. Good morning, Dawn. Welcome in. Good morning, Matt. Thank you for having me. Of course. So glad to have you in. It's it's wonderful to hear your voice. You know, with with the 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 safer at home restrictions and, and things like that, we don't get to see each other anymore. I know. It's sad. It is. It, it is. is. Uh, huge adjustment <laughs> but uh, we're going to be talking with you in just a minute about when uh, when we might be able to get back together and, and see each other walk the halls of our schools together and and see what our kids are doing i miss them as well dawn today as i mentioned is the last day of school at a lot of our area schools including scvi 
and the rest of our iLead schools. So it's been, gosh, it's been almost exactly three months to the day since we went to distance learning. And I, I know at SCVI and, and the rest of the iLead schools, uh, we, we shifted immediately, did not miss a day. I was so proud of you and the rest of the team, uh, how we took our kids from being on campus on uh, that March 13th, and then the next Monday, uh, the 16th, I believe it was, kids were up and online and, and Zooming with their, their facilitators. So how do you feel that distance learning went over these uh, these three months? How did we, we close out the year? Was that, was everything okay? I, I think it's, uh, well, first of all, let me just say, what a year. Oh, my golly. Who knew starting this year that we would have to shift in the towards the end of the year and um, really, truly become partners with our parents to make sure that their kids are educated. And as far as SCVI and ILEAD schools go, I do believe that our shift to distance learning went very well. I, there, um, we provided as many resources as we could for our families and a lot of training and support for our facilitators so that they could make that shift. Because most of our facilitators, which is what we call teachers, um, are site-based, meaning that they go to a school every day and they um, work with their learners and um, they get to see them and uh, be with them. And so that shift alone was a lot. And then you have the curriculum piece and learning Zoom and learning all of the um, electronic methods that you can use to engage your learners and keep them, keep them with you, keep them engaged, keep them um, having fun and learning. So I think and as far as the schools go, I think we did very well. I think our families, it's probably a mixed review on how they felt it went. And that's more about probably how confident or unconfident they might feel. Um, we feel that our kids are still connected and that we did provide the, the support for our families and that it went as well as expected. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Do we still have things to learn about distance learning? We sure do. But we're willing to do that work so that we can meet the needs of our kids. Yeah, definitely. I talked about it in the intro. Uh, everything that we do at SCVI and, and I lead is about meeting the kids where they're at and and teaching them the way they learn. And some of our kids need that that more personal connection. And and so it, I've heard from families that have said, you know, it's going great for my son, my daughter not so much. It, it really is kind of a function of of how the kids learn. So our seniors graduated last week, and and I, I got to see you on the. On the flat screen there, I know you were part of all of our graduation ceremonies. It was good to see you in your cap and gown again. We're known for yeah. some, some pretty amazing graduations at iLead schools. So what was your take on how we had to, to shift and, uh, and adjust? Did you enjoy the graduations as much as, uh, as I know you normally do? Well, I will admit that I was skeptical about um, the graduation ceremonies so that they would have that same feeling and same flavor. Mm -hmm. Every one of our communities where we had a graduation is very different. And uh, subsequently, because of that, every one of our graduations was very different. Yeah. So, for example, we have a, our homeschool population that's ILEAD Exploration that's part of the ILEAD Hybrid Group. They um, did an all virtual graduation. So um, it was very, very personalized. You got to learn a little bit about each one of the learners and each one was celebrated. So that was really nice. And I think they did a great job of putting it together and letting it be something seamless. The, um, Empower Generations is our pregnant and parenting teen school. And um, we had a great graduation out there that's in Lancaster. Mm -hmm. And it, they did a drive-in graduation. So the cars drove in because you know the, uh, how what's allowed in each community is just a little bit different. So that was allowed there. They drove in. The learners walked across the stage. Everyone wore their masks. They practiced social distancing. Um, and it was a beautiful ceremony. I think that those the kids worked really hard, and they deserved that. And, it, again, it felt really personalized to what they wanted and what they needed. Yeah, and again— and then, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, uh, at Empower Generations, we've got, um, like you said, learners who— um, 
uh, are, are pregnant or parenting and, and facing other points of, of trauma in their lives. So the fact that they, they dedicated themselves to go back to high school and complete their high school education is amazing enough, but to see some of them walk across the stage with you know a toddler or a baby in their hands and talk about uh, you know the college that they're going to next year was so inspiring. It is. It's really heartwarming. It really is. Yeah. So, um, and then there's SCVI's graduation. And as our founding school, that one's always has a special place in our hearts. It just does. Yeah. And, um, it, you know, a lot of things were up in the air when we were planning it. And we were really disappointed we couldn't do our regular SCVI graduation because it is such a beautiful ceremony. But I will say that Cheryl Senna and her team really stepped up and made it a beautiful event for our, our seniors. So what they did is they did a drive-through graduation where the learners came and got their diplomas. They walked across the little mini stage, and then they, there was a photo op um, with the step and repeat at the end. So we did that part of the ceremony, and then in the evening, they did a virtual ceremony. So that's where we heard the student speeches. Um, Amber and I were able to share our thoughts with the, the graduating seniors, and um, I think that that again was personalized. They had, you know, pictures of the kids. The the learners were there, in their cap and gown, and it kind of flipped back and forth between, um, you know, a still shot and asynchronous things and synchronous. So it was a nice blend, and um, I think that the learners really liked it, and I know I enjoyed it too. I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, there, as is the case, since I have not been in the classroom at SCVI for a few years now. Now, there were a few graduates that I don't know personally, but by the time the graduation was over, I knew all of them either a little bit or the ones that I've known for years, I knew even better. It was really nice. I loved the platform that they used that allowed moms and dads and grandparents to view, but every single one of the graduates was live on camera, could respond to each other. They were cheering for each other. It was, it was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed that a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to see if uh, we can somehow, we had a, we struggled a little bit the other day to try to get uh, uh, some of the, the, or to get SCVI's graduation up online. We're going to see if we can post it in a little bit. It's really worth it, um, but maybe we can uh, have our listeners Google it. It's a, about a 45-minute uh, graduation ceremony, and if you're thinking, oh, but Matt, I don't know anybody out at SCVI. Why would I watch their graduation? Trust me, you won't regret it. No, Don. I wanted. Uh, Matt, I also, I wanted to also add that we had a hundred percent graduation rate this year. Oh wow! So I, I don't know if that's because of the fact that we were doing distance learning and it helped the learners really focus on that or not. But that's really. I mean, we always have a high graduation rate, but a hundred percent. That's pretty wonderful. Yeah, that is that is fantastic. So congratulations to literally all of them. Yay! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Don, uh, you know that uh, just. This week, the state issued guidelines under which schools can can open next year. Uh, and I know you work so closely with each one of our school boards because each of our schools has their own board and, and takes their own direction. Um, with that having been said, do you know what school's going to look like at SCVI and, and some of our other schools? Do we know yet? Well, I think we've been watching the guidelines of the state pretty uh, closely. And we've had a task force working on the fall for like the past two months. And um, our idea of what we're going to do has not changed yet, but it could change at any time. So it always makes me nervous to you know, publicly say what it's going to look like because I don't think any of us really know at this point. However, what we're planning to do is a hybrid model so that our learners come to school um, two days a week. Um, so you might be on the Monday and Wednesday group or the Tuesday and Thursday group. And then Friday, we're using as training and planning for our facilitators. Um, on the days that they're not at school, when the days our learners are not at school, they will be doing distance learning. And that will be um, primarily asynchronous. So that is, um, it mimics what I've heard other districts and charter schools throughout the state and what they're doing. The thing is that we are uniquely poised to use the hybrid model because we've had hybrid, I mean, we have an actual charter called iLead Hybrid where it's um, flexible seat time and then homework time. 
So we've had some experience in that area, and those people that have experienced it and have that expertise are on our task force. So we're making sure that we get all of our ducks in a row, that we have all of the training ready to go, and that our facilitators feel as comfortable as they can. Now, I want to mention something, Matt, because um, you know we have essential workers, we have people who need to go back to work, and this is always a worry for our families. And um, what I want to say is that we are working very hard to come up with child care options for our families mm. at low or no cost. Um, we're, we're making some headway. It's really, really difficult. But I just want to say that that is in our hearts to make sure that we can offer that so that we don't burden our families in any of our communities. Yeah, it, it, it's been tough. And then you also think about uh, those folks that cross over, right? Uh, you, we've got facilitators, we've got teaching staff, we've got uh, other staff on our campuses that also have children. And so it, it yeah. has become a little bit of a difficult issue there. Don, we do need to take a quick break, but I wanted to ask you uh, about a couple of other mm -hmm. things. Uh, the training that's going on at our schools, as, as well as some of the, uh, the stuff that's been going on socially across the country. Let's uh, okay. take a quick commercial break, and we will be right back with Don even. CEO of SCVI and I lead California. You're listening to SCVI Charter Schools Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. I'm your host, Matt Watson, on your hometown station, KHTS. Power Automotive is open for you during these challenging times. They've taken extra precautions to keep their employees and their customers safe. What makes Power Automotive different? They offer a two year, 24,000 mile warranty on each and every one of their repair services. All makes and models. Autos, trucks, diesels, even RVs. Mention KHTS, you get 20% off parts. On Saudad, between White's Canyon and Sierra Highway, right behind Denny's. Power Automotive is gonna show you why they've been voted Santa Clarita's number one repair shop for the last 18 years. Marla Ferris at Augusta Financial is the consummate mortgage professional committed to helping you turn your dream of home ownership into reality. With more than 22 years in the finance mortgage industry, Marla brings extensive experience and top knowledge to help make your loan experience hassle-free. Given her honesty, integrity, and attention to detail, she is the loan officer you can trust. Marla knows what it takes to get you the best loan, the best rate, and the best service in the industry. You'll find Marla Ferris at Marla FE. RRIS.com. The best live theater can be found right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. The Canyon Theater Guild has been entertaining audiences for decades with top quality musicals and plays. Located on Main Street in Old Town Newhall, CTG also offers workshops for the young actor in your family. For more information, call the box office at 799 2702 or go online to canyontheater.org. Moms, dads, this is Cardin Ellis, owner of Unipest. If your house has ants, spiders, or gophers, or you want a free orange oil termite inspection, you have to call Unipest Termite and Pest Control, Santa Clarita's only factory certified orange oil pest control company. We specialize in organic, low impact, and traditional pest control options that are all kid friendly, pet friendly, and affordable with no contracts, and we're SCV owned and operated. Call us at 661 BUG 7575 or visit unipest.com. Get your free thermostats from Pacific Air free. Ned, what are you doing? You can't offer that. Yes, I can. With every AC tune-up this month, Pacific Air will replace your mechanical thermostat with a digital one. Free. Get in the truck, Ned. Ned's right. It's true. Mark Schneider and daughter Kaylee for Pacific Air. This month, call Pacific Air to schedule your WOW AC tune-up for just 77 bucks. And we'll replace your old mechanical thermostat. With a brand new programmable digital thermostat. Absolutely free of charge. That's a value of almost 200 bucks. And remember, we use extra safety precautions, so schedule your WOW AC tune-up today. And get your free digital thermostat courtesy Pacific Air. We think you'll say, WOW! When you want the best, call Pacific Air. Get your free thermostat with a WOW AC tune-up from Pacific Air. Hurry, limited supply. Go to packair.com. Remember, without the E, it's just air. Some restrictions apply. Loss of hearing can affect the quality of life. Santa Clarita Hearing Center can help. They specialize in both preventative hearing loss and corrective measures, including diagnostic tests, new technology hearing aids, cochlear implants, hearing protection, and tinnitus treatment. They can adjust your current hearing aids or fit you for new ones. Santa Clarita Hearing Center also offers sleep molds, swim molds, and musician monitors. Book an appointment today. Log on to SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. 
located on McBean Parkway next to the hospital. That's Santa Clarita Hearing Center.com. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, homeschooling answers. I am Matt Watson, and this morning we are talking to CEO of iLead California and co-founder of SCVI, Don Evenson. We talked before the break about what school's gonna look like and, and what some of the potential uh, models might be at SCVI and, and iLead in the fall. We know that our families, along with everyone else, is, is chomping at the bit to get back to school. Uh, well, enjoy your summer. Maybe you can, uh, uh, with the, the loosening of restrictions, your family can take a little trip. I know I'm planning to head up to Northern California a little bit later this summer. Hopefully that's still on. Uh, and then we will do our best to get your kids back in in a model that keeps them safe, but keeps them connected to their schools. Don, before we uh, before we left, I wanted to talk to you about um, some of the, the things going on in our town here in Santa Clarita as, as well as uh, across the country. There's been some protests recently, and I know you're aware of that. Uh, have you kept your eyes on, on what's going on? What's your take on uh, on the, the social demonstrations and, and everything that's happening across our country? Well, first of all, Matt, I just want to say that to me, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking um, that things have gotten to this point, that we haven't stood up and paid attention until now. And um, I have a lot of friends that are people of color, and I know they're tired. They're tired of fighting and that they need us to help. So my take on what's going on is that you know, it's necessary. People should have an opportunity to share their voice um, and be able to um, kind of educate us now. So, like, how can we help? What can we do? And um, peaceful protests are, are part of that venue. Yeah, definitely, and I, I'm right there with you. It's uh, frustrating that you know every couple decades it seems like we go through the same thing, and and the the issues get brought up, and and we deal with them short term, and then it seems like we turn our attention to other things. We can be have a little bit of a, a short memory, um, but hopefully uh, we're moving into sustained, substantial change in, in our our country and, and our world. Now, our, our teaching staff, teachers need to be aware of, of what's happening in the lives of their students, of their families, and, and in their communities. Uh, oftentimes, you know the, uh, the influence that teachers have on their, their students. Uh, do you have any, t uh, any training being planned for our schools, for the adults at, uh, at our schools for next year around racial sensitivity? Absolutely, Matt. Um, I think we have a, a we have a very diverse population, first of all, and what we want is for everybody to feel um, included and valued, and for no one to feel marginalized. So it's important to us that we have an understanding of what Black Lives Matter means and um, what that movement is all about. I know that um, myself, I. As a, as a white person, a white person of privilege, I don't know what it's like to be a person of color. I don't know what it's like to live that life. And I understand that there are probably some unchecked biases that I even have and don't even understand that I have. And I think our whole um, force of facilitators and staff feel kind of the same way right now. And I think everybody's kind of checking themselves. Sure. So what we've done is we have a, um, a national consultant who really focuses on the areas of equity and racial bias and actually any biases. And um, we're going to be doing a summer series for all of our leaders so that we can get our school leaders and our department leaders to a place where they feel comfortable with the uncomfortable. And what I mean by that is having 
those uncomfortable conversations where there might be things um, that you need to put yourself in check over. And having the opportunity for our, um, our black facilitators and leaders to express themselves and let us know how they're feeling and what we can do to stand right beside them, in front of them, behind them, wherever they want us, and we can help make this change in the world. So we're going to do a summer series, and then that will lead up into, um, as you know, Matt, we have uh, a couple of weeks of training every year. We're very fortunate in Island Schools to have that built into our, um, our schedule. And part of that training for our facilitators will also focus on the same um, things that the leaders have gone through so that our facilitators, our um, school staff feel more comfortable having those conversations with those kids and op- with our kids and opening up the, the um, floor at morning meeting and advisory to be able to talk about these very, very important conversations. They have to happen in order for them to be systemic change in our society and um, you know, get to that place where there is equality for all. Yeah, definitely. I, I think one of the beautiful things that we can take advantage of at our schools is, is the fact that um, just by the very fact that, that you're referring to facilitators and not teachers, our instructional staff is not that authority at the front of the room that that, that preaches truth the way they know it. They are, yes, educational professionals that share a learning space with their with their learners and, and can have those conversations. And, and so I think that type of relationship is at least in our classrooms, is really going to help help us go a, a long way in in furthering that conversation and, and building those uh, those relationships that we need to build. Now, you talk about training. Uh, uh, go ahead, Matt. Can I? I just want to add in one more thing because I think it's really clear that um, one training or one summer series is not going to create change in our organization the way that we want it to. So I want to mention that we have something in our organization. Called called Leadership Connections that every month our leaders go to, and they already have honest, raw conversations about a many topics. And this next year, our Leadership Connections will focus on um, racial sensitivity, biases, um, really just growing as leaders to have a better understanding. And um, we're fortunate enough that our Leadership Connections has, as you know, for years been led by Senta Green and Sid Morrison who um, are both strong black leaders and um, they are willing to pick up from where our national consultant leaves off on our training and pick that up with our leaders. In addition to that, we're also going to have a task force, an equity task force, that's going to look at our data for any disproportionality that we might have in our system so that we can look at those things and change our system so that it fits everyone and meets the needs of everybody so this is going to be a multi-year project it's not just a one-shot training that's that's great to hear Don and, and good to to point out because oftentimes we we get this right there's this uh, a big story in the news some sort of social movement so everybody rushes to do a quick training and, and it can feel and oftentimes it is that lip service you know you did your training you, you did the politically correct thing and now you just move on with business as usual well that's why we're where we're at right now is because we've moved forward decade after decade Mm -hmm. with business as usual. So you talked totally about. Totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah. You mm-hmm. talked about sustained training. We, you know, we spoke with your your friend Renee Marshall earlier in the week about um, what school's going to look like next year and how pretty much everybody's going to be in a hybrid model. Um, mm-hmm. So speaking of training, do we have training planned for the staff as well as to how to handle whatever whatever school is going to look like next year? Absolutely. So what we will do is continue to strengthen our facilitators' ability to do really effective distance learning, because I think it came out pretty strong. But I also think that there are some additional things that we can add. 
um, because the distance learning continues for the learners for two days a week. And then in addition to that, our facilitators are going to have kids with them, um, at least half of their class, every single day. So they're going to be working on both asynchronous and synchronous learning so that um, our learners have something that they're focused on and doing every day. So it's kind of like a flipped classroom model. So they might be at home learning some concepts asynchronously, and then when they come to class, they'll be able to practice those in um, person and work on their projects in person. So um, really, the learners are getting the best of both worlds. And then on, it, that's you know difficult. So we have to have sure. a lot of training for our facilitators because now they're going to be doing both. They're not just going to be doing in-person solely, and they're not going to be just doing um, distance learning solely. They're going to really be toggling between both, which is why we're giving them Fridays, which is primarily for their planning. But we will also have all of our maker teams available for support, online teachers that are available to support, so that we can continue to build on their efficacy in this area and really, really make it the best for our kids. Knowing that, Matt, at any time, if there's a spike, we could all have to shift back to distance learning. But we're really going to give it our best shot as long as we're allowed to. Yeah, definitely. And I know there are a lot of parents, Don, that are listening and, and thinking, look, we've got to get back. I need to be able to send my kid to school the, the six to eight hours uh, Monday through Friday that, that I always did because of my work, because of the realities of my family. Uh, and not all schools are, are going to be able to do that. So right now is very important for, for parents to start to advocate for their needs. It's, it's important now that they're talking to their school districts, that they're talking directly with their schools, letting them know what their needs are. Um, now, I know that uh, we have surveyed our, our families, and I'm sure that mm-hmm. we're culling through that data, but I just wanted to underline for, for our listeners how important it is, regardless of the age of your child, regardless of what your situation is. Let your district know, let your schools know what it is that you need so that, uh, so that there's no surprises walking into this school year, because it's definitely going to be different. And Matt, as we've um, discussed before, the... Um the guidelines around COVID-19 are, are pretty polarized in our communities. <laughs> and so um, that comes across, that came across um, in our surveys. So I, one thing I did not mention is that we have a chunk of families that have decided that they don't want their learners to come back to school at all. And that's an option too. So they can stay on complete distance learning. Um, and then we'll also offer the hybrid model yeah. so that we can really meet the needs of each family and the beliefs of each family, which is challenging, very challenging. Yeah, it, but it's really important that schools respond to the needs of their families because every situation mm-hmm. is different. And, you know, you yes. mentioned whether it's distance learning attached to a school site or it's the the homeschooling, the exploration program that you talked about. You know, at ILEAD, we've got a, an incredibly vibrant uh, uh, homeschooling program with several thousand learners and then we also offer iLead online which is a fully accredited kindergarten through 12th grade charter school that is completely online and provides tremendous support for your kids Um, and and just a a quick shameless plug I know we had some of the leaders from iLead online in here a couple of weeks ago talking about track C which starts up July Mm -hmm. 1st Uh, it's a great opportunity for families to kind of test drive that if they're not sure about well I don't know if I could go fully online uh, you know they can check it out try enrolling for uh, a month six weeks see how it goes so there's yeah, that absolutely Don I know you've got other <laughs> meetings and planning you have a busy summer ahead of you getting everything ready for next <laughs> school year so thanks so much yes. for joining us we do appreciate it we'll talk to you real soon thank you Matt always great to talk to you and our KHTS audience thank, thank you. you you take care and but my right. listeners don't go away when we come back we've got a, a little bit of fun with Big T you know we like to end the the, the week with uh, some laughs and, and some interesting stuff so Big T is going to be coming in in just a minute you're listening to SCVI Charter Schools Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers I'm Matt Watson on your hometown station KHTS
These days, it's hard to figure out how to fill all the self-isolation time, let alone figure out what to have for lunch or dinner. Salt Creek Grill owner Greg Amsler is helping us out in a big, big way. Salt Creek is now offering takeout and curbside pickup, so you don't even have to get out of your car. Their entire menu is available for pickup or delivery, including to-go beer and wine. Hey, in addition, Greg's offering wine at 25% off along with daily specials. If you'd like to buy a gift card for a future visit, it, now's the time. Buy a $50 gift card and get 10 extra dollars on the card completely free. Buy a $100 gift card, you get an extra 25 bucks. Salt Creek Grill, located next to Regal Cinema at the Valencia Mall. For more info, go to saltcreekgrill.com. You see so much when you look at your child. A creative spirit that surprises you every day. Curiosity that develops into exploring unique passions. A little leader growing every day to discover who they are, what they love, and how they can make their mark on the world. At SCVI, we see those same amazing things. Our tuition-free K-12 charter school gives your child boundless opportunities to think critically and imagine freely with a customized learning program built around each individual student. As iLead's founding school, SCVI combines an immersive approach to traditional subject learning with extracurricular activities, including STEAM, robotics, theater, music, and sports. SCVI has the only international baccalaureate program in Santa Clarita with a 10-year proven track record of graduates excelling at top universities. And we're in your backyard, just off the 5 freeway in West Santa Clarita Valley in Castaic. For enrollment information or to learn more about our program, including homeschool options, visit iLeadSantaClarita.org. iLead Schools, free to think, inspired to lead. Hi, I'm Eric Goldhurst, Head of Operations for Burger King North America. Throughout this time, we've taken steps to take care of our guests. And since we know many of your jobs have been affected by this crisis, we want to help make sure you're taken care of too. If you are looking for work, we are hiring. And there's a spot on our team for you. We know that we'll get through this together, as long as we keep taking care of each other. For more information, call 253-3283. That's 253-3283. Hi, this is Kirk Stinson with Plumbing by Kirk, your hometown plumber. By this time, you should know where all your gas and water shutoff valves are in case of an emergency. If you don't, you should call Plumbing by Kirk. Our friendly staff will be more than happy to set an appointment for one of our technicians to come to your home and clearly mark all your shutoff valve locations. We invite you to visit our website for free plumbing advice at plumbingbykirk.com or give us a call, 263-6519. That's 263-6519. My dad is the best plumber ever. Call Plumbing by Kirk. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 and 1220 on the AM side. This is Matt Watson, and you are listening to Eye on the Valley, homeschooling answers. We are now joined by Big T. Do you know Big T? Big T, he's a, he's a man that's got it all. Sense of humor, great looks, life of the party, two amazing kids, an incredible little brother, uh, an amazingly successful career. Uh, by the way, Big T, uh, before we pull you up on the air, Jim Ventress wanted me to uh, let you know that uh, since you're so successful, he's expecting you to double your contribution to the Boys and Girls Club this year. And, you know, he's just an amazing guy, but be careful, ladies. He has also got an amazing wife who's a fitness instructor and a beach body coach, by the way. Big T, I tell you, he's got it all. He's my brother. He's my ace. My wingman and my mentor, he is Big T. Welcome in, Big Brother. What up, Matty? How are you? I'm doing well, doing well. Good. Hey, you know I love the Boys and Girls Club, so Matt, I will double my contribution if you match it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, I love it. <laughs> hey, it's been, a, it's been a heavy week, and I, I, I've listened to the show all week long, and I thought it's great content, but it's still been a little heavy, so I tried to, tried to mix things up a little bit, do a little bit of fun facts, and add a little, add a little humor for us going into the weekend, not to detract any, anything from the seriousness of what's going on, but you know my defense mechanism, Maddie, it's always the, it's always the humor. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, I know so Big some, T's a... Uh, motto is if you can't laugh at yourself laugh at other things hey and if you don't have something nice to say about somebody come sit next to me right <laughs> <laughs> hey so i got some random fun facts about uh, a few about humans and and a lot about animals i love animal fun facts Ooh. all right so, cool matt matt did you know that banging your head against the wall for one hour burns 150 calories 
<laughs> you don't okay. need any exercise equipment or anything else. Anybody can work out. All right. <laughs> well, well, then my listeners on Facebook Live can see that I'm not a very frustrated man. <laughs> Correct. Heart attacks, Matt, are 20% more likely to happen on Mondays. On my, that makes sense. That makes sense. And typically, uh, typically between 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. Right when that alarm goes off. <laughs> exactly. 7% of Americans, Maddie. 7% of American adults believe that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. <laughs> uh, I'm not making it up. And you think, you know, okay, 7% of isn't adults. That much. Okay. Right. But, but that's 16 million people. <laughs> All right. So, so Ronald McDonald is actually Donald McDonald in Japan because it makes it easier pronunciation for the Japanese. <laughs> Interesting. All right. All right. You know, I get it. Man, Barry Manilow did not, did not write the song. I write the songs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Tony, that, that song, I bet you think this song is about you? It, it, it wasn't. <laughs> right. Yeah. It probably wasn't. Yeah. Matt, did you know that, that most Korean people don't have armpit odor? It's scientifically only 0.006% of the Korean population have the ABCC11 gene, which is the cause of armpit odor. So as a result, deodorants are rarely sold in Korea because they're not needed. Wow. Wow, I bet the subway is a pleasant experience. Oh, exactly, the, the only subway, right? Right, yeah. Um, French French painter Claude Monet uh -huh. was only rich because he won the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> well, see there, see there, kids. There's a there's a career tip for you. You're not going to get rich painting. <laughs> right. In in 2017, more people were killed from injuries caused by taking selfies than shark attacks. <laughs> I, I, I believe that. Now, now what I do want to see is somebody taking a selfie while they're being attacked by a shark. Oh, gosh. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Maddie, the inventor of the Frisbee, uh -huh. he died a couple of years ago. Upon his death at 90 years old, he was cremated and had his ashes turned into a Frisbee. <laughs> hot, huh? And then flung into the ocean. <laughs> that is so hot. <laughs> Matt, Matt, I'm not making this up. This one is the one you've been waiting for. Well, they're fun, the but they're also facts. <laughs> no, the, the oldest your mama joke was discovered on a 3,500-year-old Babylonian tablet. Shut up. Was now you're not, you're not being serious. <laughs> I'm, I'm being serious. It was discovered in 1976 in Iran, and it had a couple of jokes on it, and one of them was the first your mama joke. <laughs> I can't share the content of the joke with you, but I will uh, this weekend. Oh, jeez. Okay. So, okay. I mean, it couldn't have been your mama so old because, I mean, how old she could she have been? It was the beginning of time. She wasn't that old. Right, exactly. So. Your mama's so young, she's got Moses' beeper number. Right. <laughs> so, Matt, the unicorn is the national animal of Scotland. I don't know why. No, they, it's not. If you're going to go with a mythical creature, why not? Tony, yes, it is. you're kidding. No, they didn't go with Nessie. Yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, Tony, we, you know that uh, on our next family vacation, we need to go to Scotland and, and, and let them know. <laughs> we need to let them know. Now, baby sea otters can't swim. Their moms will actually wrap them in pieces of kelp um, okay. while they hunt for buoyant pups learn how to paddle around on their own and then also when they sleep at night they make a raft of otters they hold hands with each other while they sleep so they don't drift apart Aww. which i guess is why you and i which is why you and i weren't sea otters met because i don't let go of your hand every night <laughs> and flail it out there <laughs> you'd, you'd, have, you'd have wet the bed even more than you did tony where's your brother he sunk mama <laughs> gone into the abyss matt, matt did you know in switzerland it's illegal to own just one guinea pig <laughs> just one. what? It's illegal to own just one guinea pig. Okay. And I think this is where the plot weekend from Bernie's came about. Because if there's two <laughs> guinea pigs on a farm, right, one of them passes away, that other one knows he's a goner unless he can make that farmer still think that that other guinea pig is alive. So you can go throw some, throw some sunglasses on him, put his little hand on the string, and wave, hey, Bernie! <laughs> <laughs> well, Tony, we talked about your wife earlier. She's Ecuadorian. It's dangerous for any guinea pig to be around in your house. Correct. Um, <laughs> Matt, do you know that you can hear a blue whale's heartbeat from more than two miles away? Two miles, wow. That's crazy. Two miles away. You can also hear a lion's roar more than five miles away. 
also underwater? <laughs> yes. Okay. And disclaimer, disclaimer, Patty, don't try this one at home, but yes. Billy goats actually urinate on their own heads to make them smell more attractive to females. <laughs> <laughs> that's I, why I'm I don't still know single. How they do it. <laughs> that, that's been the I, reason why. Well, and then, you know, Big T's analyzing this one going, now, do they help their buddy out? Or they got, like, mad flex skills? I mean, I know those Billy Goats do yoga. <laughs> <laughs> how do they accomplish that? That's a good question. Like, do you go but, to the bank shop? Hey, <laughs> yep. hey, Matt, did you know that polar bears can eat as many as 86 penguins in a single setting? <laughs> oh, my God. Not, okay, not, so how do you round 85. them all up? <laughs> yeah, not 85. It's 86. You know how they know it's 86? <laughs> How's that? But on July 4th, every year up in the North Pole, they have this annual Nathan's Penguin Eating Contest. <laughs> and in 2014, a six-year-old polar bear named Boo Boo Chestnut <laughs> 86 <laughs> penguins in a single sitting. That set the record. Happy 4th of July, everyone. <laughs> I'm, I may have made up the last part. <laughs> so now that kangaroo uh, humor. There's there's more kangaroos in Australia than there are people. Well, that I knew. As a matter of fact, um, it, they, it's open season every day in Australia. You're allowed to kill kangaroos. Uh, oh. You know, they wander onto your property. You're you're allowed to kill them. And as a matter of fact, a couple years ago, um, they actually put a bounty on kangaroos. They would pay you to for every kangaroo that you you killed. Not quite as fun yep. on that fact. No. Hey, did you know that kangaroos are left-handed? They're the only other mammal other than humans that have a dominant hand. <laughs> all kangaroos are left-handed? They're all left-handed. That, makes <laughs> that them, explains makes why, why their boxers, penmanship right? stinks. <laughs> well, that's why they're good boxers, too. They're southpaws, right? There we go. <laughs> Matt, did you, know, did you know if you lift a kangaroo's tail off the ground, it can't hop? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> kangaroos use their tails for balance while hopping okay. and so if you elevate their tail off the ground they'll they'll have no balance and they'll fall over uh, <laughs> i look forward to testing that one out <laughs> me too you know if kangaroos if kangaroos are chased they run towards water now granted they don't have a lot of predators but they do sometimes get attacked by humans or dingoes and so as a as a self-defense mechanism kangaroos will often lead their pursuer towards water, and once there, the kangaroo will try to drown their attacker. Aha! Sucker them <laughs> in. Yeah. So did you Fresh say that a fish, a fish one of their water. only natural predators is a dingo? Yes. The dingo ate my joey. Yes. Wow. Yes. Um, otherwise, the kangaroo, kangaroo will just back up against the tree, and he'll kick, and that force has enough force to kill a human being. Well, and they've got those claws that they'll yeah. just rip into you. Yep. You know, kangaroos are also, because uh, there's so many of them, they're hit by cars all the time. Oh, you I know bet. why? <laughs> uh, well, Austra Australia is an island, so they're running towards the wa water. No, maybe not. Anyways, 80% <laughs> of the animals hit by cars in Australia are kangaroos, and car rental companies will not insure you for driving at night because of the increased chances of hitting kangaroos at night. Oh, my. Wow. Ain't that so something. if you're in a rental car, you're on quarantine. Yeah. Yep. You're on My a curfew. My last one, Maddie. My last one, Maddie. Okay. Kangaroos can't move backwards. <laughs> How'd you yeah. find that because, out? <laughs> because of their tail. Well, they use their oh. tail to push them forward when they hop, so they can't move backwards. Australia actually took this as an inspiration for their coat of arms, which features a kangaroo and an emu. Both are animals that can't move backwards, which symbolizes the nation's only moving forward. There you go. Isn't there that cool? Go. Making progress. So if, there's a lesson, if there's a lesson that we can all take, we may not like where we're at, but let's just keep moving forward, people. There we go. Just like <laughs> those kangaroos. Just like those kangaroos. How do we do it time-wise? You want some fun stuff? Some uh, some trivia stuff? Uh, let's see. What do we got? Uh, maybe one quick question. Find a good one. Uh, what NBA player was the only player to be named the, for the MVP finals, even though his team lost? MVP finals? Is this uh, Russell Westbrook? No, hint, he's the logo for the NBA. Uh, I know it. Do you know it, Patty? Lo the logo. That's Jerry West. Boom. Jerry West. Yeah. Okay. All right, brother man. Home, Maddie. We appreciate it, and we appreciate you, our listeners, for coming in and, and joining us. I want to thank our guest this morning, CEO of iLead California, Don Evenson, and show contributor Big T. Always Hello. love to have you in here. We appreciate engineer Patty as well. Want to invite you in next week. We've actually got a great show coming up for you on Monday. We're going to have our newly elected congressman, Mike Garcia, coming in, along with our regular guest, Christina Debray, as well as our friends from COC. 
talking about the great quality education that they're delivering out there. So join us again next week, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. You are listening to SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers. I am your host, Matt Watson, and this is your hometown station, KHTS. Have a great weekend.